Okay, so here is how I track all of my roses. As soon as I am, I have three tabs at the bottom here. So just in case you're new to Excel, the way that you add a tab is you go to this little plus sign here and you click on that, you right click and that allows you to rename it. And then I can um, change it to whatever I want this tab to be. So I have created current inventory. So as soon as I am tracking all of the roses that are in my garden, let me show you the columns that I create, the rose name, and this would be its most recognized name. The registration name is important and you can get this information from helpmefind.com. It's important for two reasons that I have found. Um, sometimes I'll be looking at a rose online and thinking, oh, I really like that one. I need to add that one to my garden. And they are calling it by its registration name rather than its common name. For instance, Crazy Love is also La Via Cota. And so whenever I see that rose and somebody calls it by its registration name, I think, oh, I need it. And so it's important to have both names down. That's reason number one. Reason number two that I have found is with all of the Austins that you see here, um, they are, they have a registration name and oftentimes once they're out of patent and the vendors are allowed to propagate them, they call them by their registration name versus the common name. So it's just good to have that information here to be able to sort quickly and look for them. I also track it by its color, whether it's a hybrid tea, grandiflora, floribunda, shrub. So then we've got the hybridizer. Of course, if somebody said, T show me all of your roses that are by Mayland. Well, then you could quickly uh, go to a search here and show them everything that you have that is a Mayland rose. If I want to track the year, this is the re year that it was introduced. And why I like that is so that I can look at the older varieties to make sure that I have antique roses that are in my garden. That's important to me. So I'm tracking the year. I'm tracking the year, the, the year that I added the rose to my garden. This is important um, in the event that if I'm tracking the warranties and I know that I have a one year warranty, then I could sort by all of the ones from 2021 and I, I can take a look real quick at the end of the season and make sure they're doing OK. Or let's say it starts to decline and it's one of my older roses that I've had from, you know, 2014. I could, you know, pull it up real quick, look at it and say, well, you know, I've got all, I've got 15 Evelyn's uh, from uh, in between 2014 and 2020. Maybe it's just time that um, something has happened with, you know, it being a graft that doesn't work well in my environment. I also track the height and the width, and that's important to me in the event that, of course, looking at a space and deciding where, where, where it will fit best. I track the quantity so I can tally my roses where I track where it has been planted and I track who it came from. I track where the location is. So I do a head count every year, usually at the beginning of the spring and just make sure that I have the proper planting location here. So in the event that I need to go find it and I've lost it, um, I can figure out where it was last. <laughs> So these are the columns that I'm using to track my roses that have been very beneficial. I organize them alphabetically by the rose name and you'll see that there are some blanks here. This is what I work on over the winter. I go through and fill in all of the fields that in my haste I have left blank. So that's just something fun for me to do as I work on things. So let me show you real quick. Um, my other tabs. So as I'm dreaming about roses, I have just a wish list here where I've got the name and who I think I'm going to get it from. But these are roses that I have no idea who makes them or, or wh when they'll be available here. Of 
course you can see summer song at the top of the list and now here are the roses that i have paid for and i'm waiting for them to come in i haven't added them to that full inventory list because these are things that i have already have here and i just don't want to get confused so this is the easiest way that i have found to track is to keep a separate tab for all of the roses that i am waiting for and you can see that it's a pretty extensive list um, and then once these roses arrive they get transferred almost immediately to that current inventory list so this is how i manage my life so this in combination with the labels have really helped me to organize my garden um, know where everything is be able to track how old it is um, and i would recommend and i'm going to do during this winter um, that we are going to add a column here that is rootstock and i'll be able to go through and say um, is it own root is it um, on dr huey is it uh, multiflora? Is it a Fortuniana? Niana, one of my favorite words. <laughs> so um, I will go through this winter and update all of this so that as I'm walking around and a rose is really doing superior i can take a quick look and see well it's been grafted or its own root and with that knowledge it helps me to understand if its own root why it might be lagging just a little bit behind for that first or second season before it meets up with the others so i just buy any labeler this is the one that i have been using now for several years i'm just very comfortable with it when you want to open the top you just simply push it open and take out your label so I'm using 24 millimeter clear and I know that I searched on um, outdoor or waterproof when I bought that um, and it has worked great for me it does not fade at all this is Bagheera just in case you were interested he wanted to say hello and be a YouTube star today um, so what do I put on my labels um, let's say I use, I want to put in Graham Thomas and for me I liked when I chose this one I chose it because it looked like a computer keyboard so it was just very user-friendly um, so I'm gonna put in Graham Thomas and then I'm gonna hit enter and it brings it down to line number two and so this is where I have decided it makes sense for me to start tracking um, that it is uh, own root and it is from um, David Austin, and I can just put DA or, or Austin, directly from David Austin, and I added it to my garden in 2021. I'm gonna go to the next line on it, and I'm going to say that this is a Austin climber, and it was, I like knowing the year, so I'm going to put in here 1983, of when it was introduced so then I just hit print so let's get a look at it here what do you think Bagheera so let's look at this it says Graham Thomas now here if it was um, Dr. Huey I would do DH if it was Multiflora MF Fortuniana maybe just a capital F um, and so then I've got the um, who I bought it from. So you would put here your Chambly, Northland, um, whatever you know you want to put there. And then the year that you added it to your garden. And then who the breeder is. Is it a climber or a shrub? And then the year that it was introduced. But figure out what works for you. Um, so then it just simply comes off the sticker. And then we're going to add it here like this okay so I like the clear back what the labels that I'm using I'm going to link everything down below I'll give you um, a, a label maker to consider I'll show you the tape that I'm using these are stainless steel and after years they look the same in my garden as they did when I put them in um, so they really hold up to the elements well these are the 10 inch and I buy these from Kincaid I will link that down below 
but do you see how that looks? So decide what works best for you um, and what you'd like to see on your label. Will the labels detract in the garden? No, because I usually take this label and I put it about a foot in front of the rose and then the rose ends up growing over um, this so that I can still peek around and see. Um, and then you can keep on moving it out however far you want, but I haven't found that it causes a problem um, detracting the eye uh, from the rose. But a funny story, one time when I was on social media, somebody got themselves all worked up because people wanted labels and they were saying, you know, <laughs> Why do you need labels? They're so ugly. Don't you remember the roses that you got? Well, I'm getting old. And oftentimes as I'm going around the garden, I think, I wonder if that's so-and-so because it looks different at different times in the year. And it's just easier for me so that I don't have to bend down if I have any questions and scour around and look for that tag that's you know attached to the bottom of the rose. I can just a really quick glance be able to say, this is the rootstock this is how old it is, this is the name. So hopefully you'll find something that works for you for being able to track your roses and um, be able to quickly identify them in the yard. But if you have any other ideas for what has worked for you, please make a comment down below so that everyone else can read it. I really hope this video was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.